This is your Barbados Today Evening News update for Thursday, February 22nd. So glad you can join us. I'm Frenella Wedderburn. The National Union of Public Workers will remain a full member of the Congress of Trade Unions and Staff Associations of Barbados. This evening, the NUPW's council held talks to discuss the matter. Our Colville Munzee is tracking the story. This afternoon, the NUPW General Secretary, Roslyn Smith, told Barbados today that the motion to sever ties with the umbrella body, which was the only item on the agenda, lost by a very narrow margin. However, immediately after the meeting, which began at 2.30 p.m. and ended at 4.20 p.m. at the NUPW's headquarters at Dalkeith Road, St. Michael, some members argued angrily within earshot of the media, expressing serious concern that the vote was held in the first place. Yesterday, a source familiar with the development in the union told Barbados today the rift stemmed from CITUSAB's refusal to back the NUPW's two-day strike in January, which was aimed at pressuring Frondel Stewart administration into acceding to the union's pay demands. This is Colville Munzee reporting for Barbados today. To the law courts now, a 22-year-old mother charged with cruelty to a child pleaded guilty to the offense today when she appeared in the District A Magistrate's Court. Latoya Joyanne Morris of Block 1, 11G Eden Lodge Housing Area, St. Michael, was charged in connection with a recent social media posting. In the videos, Morris can be seen force-feeding the young infant food. She was also seen kicking the infant several times in the head. When she was arrested by police, she reportedly said, she was simply playing with the child. However, when she appeared before Magistrate Christy Curfee Sargent today, she said she was only putting her foot around the child's head. Morris was granted $500 bail to return to court on May 4. The magistrate has also ordered a pre-sentencing report into her life. A man accused of the murder of 73-year-old Shirley Rogers also appeared before Magistrate Christy Cuffey Sargent in the District A Magistrate's Court today. 43-year-old Sean Christopher Innes was remanded to Her Majesty's Prison, Dodds. He will reappear in court on March 22. Rogers' body was found on a bench at a bus shed on the Princess Alice Highway last week Wednesday. In other news this day, the Barbados Road Safety Association is giving the thumbs up to the recent ban prohibiting motorists from using their cell phones while driving. The measure, which was part of changes under the Road Traffic Amendment Act, went into full effect yesterday. BRSA President Charmaine Roland Bowen says it's been a long time and it's a step towards reducing road accidents. Over the years, you know, we have been warning, given a warning about the dangers of the Road Safety Association, actually, mm -hmm. about the dangers of driving distracted. So person ha persons had ample time to make themselves ready, you know, whether it be installing Bluetooth equipment or whatever equipment they need to be installed in their car, mm -hmm. so that they can comply with this law. And we are happy because something such as this daily, too many accidents are on our roads. And each and every accident that there is, you know, there is a cost, you know, attached to it. There's regional and international news after this short break. I speak to you in the most expoundaciously and bumblacious manner. AgroFest 2018 is here. So why are you procrastinating your physiognomies? Go and get your tickets now at all the approved bus offices. And listen, the ticket prices have been reduced. Dolly, Duxi and Dan can be there, so why not you? AgroFest 2018, you farming the future. And as the young people say, AgroFest can be lit. AgroFest can be chopping. AgroFest got me so excellent. Barbados Today, news you can trust. 
Welcome back to Regional News. The Financial Investigations Branch of the Trinidad and Tobago Service says they are probing several cases of terrorism financing. Word of this from Inspector Avinash Singh at a weekly police press briefing. Just about two weeks ago, members of the TTPS were somewhat vague regarding what the rest of the world seemed to deem as a terror threat. Here in TNT, officials saw it differently. Criminal activities that will get to disrupt Canada. Now, arguments are to and fro as to whether or not there is a terror cell or radical terrorists in TNT. But the fact is, the state has reason to suspect persons in this country are financing terrorism. You are working on certain cases involving terrorist financing. There, there are several matters on the investigation, yes. Inspector Avinash Singh of the Financial Intelligence Branch of the TDPS says they receive information from the Financial Intelligence Unit of the Finance Ministry. To date, the FIB has charged a total of 17 persons for money laundering offenses, um, a total of 90 charges. In short, the FIU collects and analyzes financial intelligence and information. They pass on any suspected money laundering or terrorist financing activities to the FIB, which does the investigations and lays charges. On the international front, British police are investigating a package reportedly addressed to Prince Harry and his fiancée Meghan Merkel as a racist hate crime. The Metropolitan Police said that officers tested a substance in a package received at St. James Palace said to be white powder. The package also reportedly contained a racist letter. The investigation is being led by the London Counterterrorism Command. And that's news for today, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.bobbitterstoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And don't forget, Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Good evening.